So our next speaker is Dr. Yun Sun, um, who's another member of our Stanford Ophthalmology faculty where he's an associate professor. He's a glaucoma specialist and he's a clinician scientist with a particular interest in rare diseases that are related to glaucoma. And he'll be speaking today on mechanisms of vision loss and glaucoma and how we might be able to relate these to optic distrusion. Uh, Young, we can't hear you. Okay, give me one second. Oh, we're good now. All right, great. Um, okay, uh, okay. I have no financial disclosures. I just go, I was just saying that I have uh, uh, ten minutes to cover visual loss in glaucoma, which is a very major topic. So mm -hmm. I'm going to try to cover the major points. Uh, first, um, so the learning learning objectives are to define the most common types of glaucoma and define the basis for visual loss in glaucoma. So uh, I would like to introduce a patient that I saw in clinic. Uh, she's a 78-year-old lady with a unilateral optic nerve uh, drusen on the left side. And uh, she has vision that's actually very good in 2025 in both eyes. Pressure is elevated in 26 on the left. She already had undergone an eye stand implant and that's the reason why she came to see me. Um, and you can see that on her optic nerve photos the drusen is very clear on the left um, and the right looks quite good. On her OCT exam, she actually has very healthy optic nerve um, uh, RNFLs and I was not worried about that. On Humphrey visual field, she has some nasal uh, defects that's showing up on the left. Uh, on the right is actually uh, also uh, very much full. Um, so the management for her comes with uh, what is uh, the glaucoma diagnosis and how to manage this uh, patient who has concurrent ODD. So uh, glaucoma is uh, what I see every day and what I think about all the time. Uh, it is a group of uh, optic neuropathies with characteristic optic nerve changes. Here on the bottom is a diagram that shows the progression of uh, glaucoma uh, in different stages. Uh, typically we think of glaucoma when it's already uh, in the lay functional impairment stage, but there's also, uh, there's also undetectable stages in the early phase. There's the asymptomatic uh, stage when there's probably a disease occurring, but we're not able to pick it up. So we'll talk about some of this uh, as we go through the talk. The characteristic changes of the optic nerve is uh, increased cup of the optic disc, thinning of the disc rim, uh, and this disease is progressive. We will see this uh, over time, typically on the order of years, but sometimes it can occur uh, rapidly in uh, neovascular disease, for instance. Um, there's uh, a disc hemorrhage and uh, loss of nerve, uh, nerve fiber layer uh, with, uh, with progression. So the visual field loss is, uh, uh, has to correspond to the optic nerve finding, and this uh, has to be a reproducible and progressive disease. And one of the problems we see in glaucoma uh, field, but also for research, is that sometimes you can have different patterns of visual field, but then they also have similar uh, mean deviation, the same similar loss. Even though they could have different areas of the nerve affected, um, the, uh, when we measure it by mean deviation loss, you can see this bottom uh, figure seven of the um, visual fields all have similar uh, mean deviation loss, but they have very different patterns and different areas that's been affected. So this contributes to the differ different uh, difficulty in diagnosing glaucoma on top of ODD. So what are the functional uh, underlying reasons for why we have uh, a vision loss? So renal ganglion cell death and, or loss in function is the main reason. We see that the most common uh, fact, uh, most common uh, factor that we can intervene is uh, intraocular pressure listed on top. But uh, also in terms of uh, ideologies, we think about blood flow, we think about uh, uh, toxicity due to uh, glutamate, uh, decreased trophic factors. Uh, and in the last uh, several uh, years with a 
low CSF pressure as one of the causes. So there's a lot of reasons for why renal ganglion cells may, may suffer uh, loss. And uh, what I explain to patients is that they can uh, through the different types of visual field loss. So the most common we see are arcuate defects, and uh, um, they also can present with the nasal steps and temporal wedge. These are just different uh, types of uh, patterns that we see uh, most commonly in the arcuate defects, but all the other types can occur in glaucoma. And the main reason that I was uh, mentioning before is that in glaucoma, there's uh, visual field loss. We need to see a corresponding uh, loss on the optic nerve head here you can see the superior nasal field, oh, uh, superior RQ defect has to correspond with the inferior uh, uh, thinning of the uh, nerve fiber uh, at the optic disc. If this doesn't correspond correctly, then we don't uh, consider that to be glaucomatous. So how do I explain this to a patient? Um, so usually what I would say is that there's um, a, uh, when, when the retinal ganglion cell gets activated, showing red, uh, when the light hits a, uh, photoreceptors, renal ganglion cells gets uh, set off and we see the image. And in the normal cases, uh, as shown up on top, there could be nine different uh, renal ganglion cells that subserve one, uh, one pixel in our vision. And um, we can lose 30% of these healthy cells without actually being able to detect a single spot of loss. So on the right hand side, you can see that um, even with 30% loss, you can still have a very much a clean uh, visual field. But as we lose more than these, we can sometimes, in some people it could be 50%, uh, in some could be 70%. These can tra translate to moderate loss. And all of a sudden you can see that there's a uh, patch of darkening of the visual field. And as we lose more ren renal ganglion cells, this translates to uh, more rapid and uh, uh, noticeable vision loss. So on the bottom, you can see that now you have only 10% of the visual field of uh, uh, renal ganglion cells remaining, and that can, uh, that can represent uh, maybe 70% of visual field loss. So this is a very um, important concept. So there's uh, uh, one is that there is um, a functional redundancy built into the system, that there is uh, some excess of renal ganglion cells that may be subserving the visual field so that they are, are affected first. And uh, uh, when they're lost first, um, uh, we, we, we may be able to detect uh, functional change with, by visual field later. So uh, here's a, uh, a diagram that's drawn by uh, a Portriati uh, on the uh, renal ganglion cell function. On the uh, panel A is uh, for diseases that have rapid decline. Uh, the red line is for uh, visual function and the blue is the, the actual structures. Um, when we look at individual renal ganglion cells, um, so for A, these are like uh, diseases like uh, Labor's, uh, Labor's uh, optic neuropathy, and B is a disease like glaucoma that have slow progression. When, uh, we, what you can see is that when the uh, uh, visual uh, function can decline, an uh, individual ganglion cell function can decline, followed by their structural loss. And this is, um, and there you can have a window in which you can intervene that. But if you look at the aggregates of tens of thousands of renal ganglion cells together, um, uh, okay, so, um, you can have a different pattern of vision loss. So what are the most, uh, uh, what are the rules that we observe in visual field uh, defects in glaucoma? Uh, first is that glaucoma as a visual field respects horizontal meridian. So they only occur typically on the superior or the inferior half first, and then when the disease progresses, it involves both. Uh, second, with early disease uh, for glaucoma, it's usually asymptomatic, like what I was mentioning uh, previously. It took us a while to recognize that glaucoma has a pre-parametric disease stage. And the third is that visual field often gets worse in the eye that already has uh, more vision loss. So it seems like the, the uh, eye that's worse tend to get worse faster. And the last is that the visual field loss occurs in the hemifield in the same hemifield before it goes to the other uh, hemifield. So um, what are the relation, what's the relationship between glaucoma and ODD? It is actually very uh, few studies. There are only a, a smattering of case reports that have uh, uh, looked at this topic. Even though we see the patients in clinic, but the studies are really hard to come by. Uh, John Sample uh, 
1985 had uh, presented five patients who had uh, uh, pigmentary, uh, who had uh, glaucoma and uh, ODD. These are patients who have uh, diagnosis of uh, elevated pressures, who had uh, trabeculectomies, and in some cases, uh, um, a significant loss of vision. And they had also concurrent ODDs. And out of the five patients, four had pigmentary glaucoma. And uh, for those who may not know the, uh, about pigmentary glaucoma, these are uh, pigment dispersion from the iris. Um, these are from the pigment and the posterior aspect of iris rubbing off on the lens nodules, causing translumination defects, as you see here. And they can get Kuklenburg spindles on the cornea and uh, uh, trabecular meshwork uh, pigmentation. So, so there's a possible link with certain types of glaucoma with uh, ODD. Um, but also, if you look at uh, I, uh, one of the best studies that I have found uh, that have looked at ODD and uh, glaucoma or uh, ocular hypertension is uh, a group, uh, so uh, Bob Rich's group in New York, they had uh, looked at uh, 80 some patients with a uh, uh, diagnosis of ODD and uh, uh, ocular hypertension, and they divided the uh, uh, patients into subgroups based on their uh, optic nerve drusen, whether they were um, grade one, two, or three, depending on how apparent the drusens were. They also looked at uh, uh, the pressures divided into two separate groups. And what they found was, if you look at patients who had optic uh, uh, ocular hypertension, um, they had higher risk of uh, uh, having vision loss. So even for the normative normal tension group, they have already a uh, significant 66% of the patients have vision loss. But if you had ocular hypertension, they, uh, that group uh, goes up to 90%. So uh, this is probably the largest uh, cohort of patients who had ODD and uh, uh, elevated intraocular pressure or glaucoma suspect. So um, again, this is a, a, a 2008 study. So it's been a while since anybody has ex examined this topic. Um, and uh, uh, coming back to the patient that I presented earlier, for patients who have hypertension, ocular hypertension, and uh, glaucoma suspect with ODD, typically we treat them with uh, uh, IOP lowering therapy. And out of the uh, the conclusion of this study, um, they present they um, summarize something that is, I think is still pretty pretty much true. Uh, they they state that it is not possible to determine if the visual field loss is secondary to optic nerve head drusen or uh, competent uh, glaucoma. And because of the increased susceptibility to uh, visual field loss, uh, they, uh, we recommend that patients who have uh, uh, ocular hypertension should be treated with uh, uh, IOP lowering therapy. So I find that this is uh, also a lot of glaucoma specialists will agree with. And uh, 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 we will uh, need to do more research to understand uh, what distinguishes the visual field loss uh, in ODD and what is the uh, risk for developing glaucoma in these subset of patients. So I'd like to thank uh, Ann Xu and Sophia uh, Wang in our department, uh, Lisa He in our, uh, in our community, and uh, uh, Dr. Goldberg. Uh, I'll take any questions. Thank you very much, Yang. Um, we have a question from China um, from Dr. Haijun Gong. Um, asking if glaucoma patients also have buried ODD, the visual field may be different from the standard glaucoma. And then how do you go about defining the glaucoma stage? Yes, that's an excellent question. Um, so when patients initially present, um, we usually uh, get the baseline visual field. And if they already have noticeable uh, uh, optic nerve head drusen, then that sets a the question whether it is it uh, optic nerve head drusen by itself versus uh, uh, ODD plus glaucoma. And in, in the latter case, we have to observe progression. So if they, they may well have um, a progression, um, but if, uh, if it's a uh, um, progression that's related to what we typically see enlarging of uh, uh, previously existing scotomas, uh, um, in, uh, progressing of uh, uh, visual field loss, encroaching the, visual, uh, the central um, uh, fixation. Uh, we think about those as uh, glaucoma uh, um, related. And then that's, if we demonstrate progression, usually we will advance therapy. Okay. Great. Great, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Sun, that was excellent.